All right, so I normally talk about pro audio, but I do other videos as well of things that interest me and I find curious or that I'm working on. And today I want to talk about my adventure with trying to put solar on a house up in Big Bear Lake, California. I went to put solar on it and contacted a bunch of different companies. A Tesla was the best price, but they came out and looked at it and they said, I need a new roof. I don't need a new roof. Uh, there was pollen on the roof. It made it look like yellow. It didn't cost me any money, just a headache. Called many other solar companies and the prices were pretty high up there. If you're getting solar, there's a lot of this complexity and crap. I've put it on uh, the house I live now. Distill it all down to one simple number, dollar per watt. You take how much the entire thing is going to cost you, you take the total number of watts or kilowatts, and you divide the kilowatts by the dollars, dollars per watt. And you come up with a number, and it should be, I don't know, like $250 to $3, $350 on the high side, depending on what you got. If you can get it down below three bucks a a what? Oh, you're doing good. Well, these things are coming in pretty high. Then I remembered reading some news about the war in Ukraine and how people were putting up what they call balcony solar. Now, balcony solar in this situation was people were getting small solar panels or solar panels, putting them on the balcony and plugging them into their wall and reverse powering through the wall outlets and whole buildings would do it. Everybody put on their balcony and the amount of solar that was available uh, increased and they kind of all shared the power and it all spit back into the building and kind of generated electricity without putting in a big array and everything's portable. This sounded amazing and brilliant. And I started thinking about how does that work? Well, obviously it can work because solar power on the roof somehow generates electricity, puts it back into the house and it shows back up and you sell back to the power company and you need to get permits and there's, they buy back at a rate and they sell at a rate. There's a bunch of hoops to jump through and a bunch of rules. So I'm thinking, what is this balcony solar? Can I get it? And I started researching and surprisingly, you can't find it anywhere. This should be the most popular thing in the world. What if I got some solar panels and plugged them into the wall? I wouldn't need the permits. What if we could just plug them in and we're just generating electricity at the house year round, or at least whenever the sun's out. And I didn't have to go through all this rigmarole. And it's really interesting because it ends up in a plug. You have solar panels and they go into an inverter and then they plug in these connections here and here and then they come out of the inverter into a plug that looks dangerous. I mean, why would you have electricity on a hot plug? This looks like a big problem and there's a lot of people that are uninformed that lose their minds over this hot, seemingly hot plug scenario. In reality, it's not quite that simple or dumb. What happens with a solar panel is it generates DC electricity. It goes into an inverter that converts it to AC electricity. And then there is a phase alignment where it takes the frequency, the 60 Hertz, whatever the frequency is of the wall voltage and aligns the output of the inverter frequency so that they're perfectly in phase. And then, and only then, does it turn on the electricity and allow it to put energy back into the system. If it's out of phase, it's just going to blow up the inverter. It's going to burn energy. So they have to be perfectly in phase alignment. Well, the inverter sees the wall voltage, lines up the phase, and then fires up. So this is never a hot plug because the inverter won't work unless this is energized. You plug this into the wall, it powers up the inverter, the inverter sees the wall voltage, it sees the solar panel, it lines the two, and then starts sending energy back. When you unplug it, if it's working properly, it should shut off and this becomes dead again. Does this work? This sounds fascinating to me. It sounds cool as can be. It sounds useful. It sounds like everybody should have it. It sounds like you could just buy some solar panels, put them in your backyard, plug them into an orange extension cord, and 
offset some of the energy in your house. Now, this is uh, not a lot of power. It's only 640 watts. There's four 160 watt panels. And there's two per feed, 320, 320, 640. 640 watts. How much is that on a 20 amp circuit or a 15 amp wall plug, right? How many amps is that? Well, one amp is 120 watts, two is two. So it's probably about five and a half amps going back the other way into the breaker. You wouldn't want to put like a 25 amp going the other way into the breaker. It would blow the breaker. So there is a limit to the amount you can do. I don't know what the exact rules are. I mean, am I going to get in trouble? for not having a permit, for generating energy and putting it back into the grid and uh, not paying fees, or I don't know. But there's one way to find out, and the easy way is not looking it up online because it's hard as heck to figure out. So what I'm gonna do is try it and see what happens. So I bought the system, and um, let's look at the bits. We've got uh, the inverter here, and it came with this which is the inverter to wall outlet and this little box which looks like it goes outside this is pretty short so this waterproofing on this is a little concerning doesn't seem as weather resistant as it would need to be and it's not a very long so maybe i need to get a longer cable for this i don't know it's got a little little plug-in meter here that uh, you plug in to plug this into the wall and it tells you how much energy is going the wrong way how much you're putting into the house there is four of these panels here and each of the panels has so you turn this around has a cable on the back of it to jumper to the next panel so that they can connect together cool so will it work i don't know should work let's go find out i'm gonna go out in my backyard fire this up and plug it in as far as um whether it's worth it i don't know i mean maybe i won't get uh, money selling back to the grid i'm gonna look at the bills and we'll find that out i'll keep you updated as things progress or catastrophe happens and it fails all right let's go ahead and hook this up so these panels have a bunch of wires in the back of them have to hook them up in series so far Pretty easy. I got a red light. Something's going on. All right, this is the final moment here. Plug that in. It says power consumption, none. All right, no voltage. Let's see if it works. Oh, the light's green now. Flashing green. Look at that. 29.3 watts for 45 seconds. 30 watts, 30.3. It's counting up. It looks like it works. Solar in five minutes. Oh, wonder if I can, um, standing in front of the panel here. 36 watts. But if I go down here, you get to 42 watts. It even sees me in the power drop. Cool, all right. Balcony solar or backyard solar. All right, so I took the four solar panels and put them into a lean-to on the side of the house up here in Big Bear. And you can see here, I did it out of redwood. Look in the bottom and I'll clean it up. This will kind of get tested out and see how it works and replace this cable with a proper something or other to make it down into the power outlet there. Maybe I'll run a conduit up, but I kind of like it to be a portable. I mean, it's just bolted onto the side of the house and it's pretty much just a portable lean-to solar power that plugs right into the wall. So let's go ahead and plug it in and see what happens. Plugging that in the wall. So now we have live power here and we've got our solar panels fired up and we got this red light which means they're making electricity. And then electricity on the solar panel, it's got a live plug. So we got power coming from here and power coming from here, and this is a hot plug. So that should be real dangerous. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lick it. It tastes good. Now this inverter won't generate electricity. So what's gonna happen is we'll plug it in. And what should happen is it should look for the electricity on the wall, energize the circuit, turn green, start making electricity, and then we can see it here on this. And we're making 9.34 watts. Yeah, making 10 watts of power. Not much, but considering the sun is not, oh, really, 14, 16, it's ramping up. So this thing should make juice. We get 300 days of sunshine a year up in Big Bear here. This thing will trickle in. It's supposed to be 640 watts max. I don't know how much it's gonna really do. 
Maybe we're lucky you get a kilowatt a day, 365 kilowatts a year, I don't know. Should offset all the juice that the house uses when nobody's here. I don't have any like agreement, but it's only 640 watts going into a 15 amp circuit. Circuit breakers don't care which way the power goes. So it should be good. See what happens, then if it works, I should be able to get up to 1800 watts, 20 amps on this. I can limit the power on the uh, a little box. I can limit the power if I need to. Run up to three of these and uh, see if the electric bill goes down because 35 cents a kilowatt up here because it's not a full time. All right, cool. Let's see if it works. Hey, you watch this video. Finding cable. This is cable management. This is um, a very nice cable here. It likes to be cold. It keeps it nice and rigid. That way it doesn't um, easily get untangled, you know, because it, it's very nice this way. I recommend freezing PVC cables because they're um, rigid and brittle. Dangerous stuff. This thing's gonna look just like it came out of the package. Brand new. It's important we have a long cable here because it's a very short run. And that way the electricity gets more exercise and doesn't um, get lazy. We don't want lazy electricity. Alright, so I'm gonna plug this in and see what happens. Here, 